Hey friends, everyone likes free plugins, but what I didn't say in the title is that all of the EQ plugins we're about to go over today don't have a frequency spectrum graph or an analyzer. Instead, they have what you might consider by today's modern standards a limiting and potentially crippling user interface. But before you skip this video, ask yourself why these EQ designs are still being used by nearly all top industry mixing professionals. If you're curious, as you always should be, let's check it out. Okay, so I pulled the Seed to Stage Discord to see which non-graphic EQs folks like to use. One user asked the same burning question that I imagine many of you are having right now. They asked, I never fully understood the point of these EQs when you can already make your own intricate EQ curves with parametric EQ, and also subtle distortion in the frequencies which interest you by combining EQ and saturation. Now hopefully this video will serve as answering that very question, but I'd rather have you learn by listening in context rather than having me just talk at you. So that brings us to the first and my favorite non-spectrum EQ, the Poltec. There are many different plug-in forms of this EQ, the most popular of which by Waves and UAD, all of which center around an EQ design that originates back to 1951 when the Poltec company created the original EQP-1. Here, we're gonna use the unbelievably free PTEQ-X plugin by Ignite Amps. Let's check it out. So I recently bought an Arteria Polybrute, which is a really giant, awesome sounding polysynth. And I think this material is gonna be really nice for listening to what these EQs can actually do. Okay, so I'm gonna grab an instance of the PTEQ-X. And this is what the Poltec EQ looks like. So you can see that the frequencies themselves on this are set at specific frequency bands. You can't really change this. You can only step between these different frequencies, okay? Let's go ahead and take a listen to this first track here. The beautiful sounds of the Polybrute. The thing is absolutely gorgeous. So to me, this instrument sounds great, but it's got a little bit too much low end. And to me, I'd like to shape the low end, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn up the boost and then I'll choose a frequency to mess with. So I'm kind of liking what's happening around 100 hertz. So you might be thinking, 100 hertz, that's really deep. Why would you care about EQing 100 hertz? Well, the thing you have to think about is this is not a surgical EQ. This is a super wide band. We're probably boosting frequencies up to 600 hertz with this move. But the genius of the design of the Poltec is also this next knob, and this is the attenuation knob. What this does is it applies a curve to the EQ that kind of attenuates at the same frequency that it's boosting, and so you can get this really gentle curve. So let's go ahead and listen to what this will do. Now listen to how that's focused the low end. Let's turn the boost down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and AB the plug-in. So now we've kind of scooped and focused the base of this. Now we can also work on the top end over here with this filter. So what I'll first do is I'll turn up the boost. And this is this is one of my favorite ways to use this. I'll turn up the boost and then I'll choose the frequency and then I'll work with the attenuation. That 5K boost is just gorgeous, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attenuate because you can hear a lot of that scratchiness in the top. Okay, so let's A-B the plugin. Glorious. So at the bottom we have these low and high cuts here, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring out some of the subs of this sound. So let's go ahead and listen to that. And we can feel that focus, okay? Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the top. So now looking at the top of this plugin, this is where a lot of magic happens. This is the mid-range equalizer, and essentially we have two bands that we can boost and then a dip frequency in the middle. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to find where the mojo of this sound is. Mm -hmm. 
That 500 hertz boost right there sounds really good to me. Adds a little bit of that that honk to the signal, if you will. But of course, it's a lot now. So I can use my dip frequency to dip there. Let's go ahead and try to see what happens when we dip the same frequency that we boost. Let's go ahead and AB the plugin. I actually feel like we could actually dip a little bit lower. Let's go ahead and, and see what happens at 200. Awesome. And then finally we have the mid-range boost frequency that we can choose here. Let's go ahead and see what gives this more the mojo we're looking for. So I'll start it all the way down here and turn this up. To me, I'm really liking this 2K here, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit. It's pretty drastic. So now that we've got all this worked out, let's take a really detailed listen to the difference that this plugin makes. Okay, so not only can we hear that we have really cleaned this signal up, but we can also hear some of this really interesting, very subtle harmonic content being added to the signal. There's, there's a tiny little bit of saturation happening here in all the right ways, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this a little bit faster on the this, on this second track. This is just a pad sound here. Let's go ahead and drag this on here. Let's take a listen. Just a beautiful signal already. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just work on the top end here. Because I just wanna add some air. So I'm gonna turn my boost up and I'm gonna turn the high frequency down and then bring it up until there's a frequency range that I like. Okay, so that's a lot of top end that I've added there. I decided to go with the 8K setting, but now I'm gonna work on the attenuation. Let's go ahead and listen to the difference. You see, it truly is the interplay between the boost and the attenuation on this Poltec. Okay, so obviously the Poltec sounds good, but what's the difference between using the Poltec and just setting up a similar curve, big broad curve, with EQ8 or FabFilter Pro Q3? You'll see all manner of opinions, arguments, and claims across the internet for why the Poltec sounds as good as it does. Maybe it's because it preserves the phase relationship across the entire spectrum. Or maybe it's because it's adding that subtle saturation mojo to the signal. Even on the UAD promo video for the Poltec, they claim that the Poltec can do things that other EQs can't do. Now, maybe all that's true to a certain degree, but to me, the true reason the Poltec is such a viable tool for mixing, and likely why so many people use it, is the main point that I want to make with this video. Not having a spectrum analyzer forces you to listen. Open up an EQ such as EQ8 or Pro Q3 and you're instantly presented with an audio spectrum graph. Now, as amazing and super useful as these graphs are, there's simply no way that these graphs don't influence your mixing decisions to some degree. You instantly look where the peaks and valleys of your signal are, you can't miss them, they're right in front of you both audibly and visually. Meanwhile, non-graphic EQs like the Poltec remove the influence the Spectrum Graph has over your decisions. It gives you back one of the greatest gifts a mixing engineer could ever ask for, and that's objectivity. Or in other words, the ability to have perspective on your mix that isn't all left-brained and analytical. Instead, it gives you a frame of mind that begs you to be creative and actually enjoy the process of tonally shaping your instruments. Many folks will refer to the Poltec and other hardware EQs that have been around for decades as musical. 
you can be the judge of what that means. But I would argue that outside of the obvious great sound quality that these EQs have, objectivity is the main reason that you see the Pultec EQ as a hardware or plug-in device in almost every major studio in the world. And the other thing to consider about the Pultec is that it has very wide bands at set frequencies. That is, you can't change those frequencies. The thing is, is that human ears haven't evolved since 1951 in any meaningful way. There are key areas in our hearing that can benefit from broad tonal changes. And this brings me to another vital and free EQ tool that every studio can benefit from, and that's the good old Bax EQ. Now, Coral's version of this Bax and All EQ is a free plugin that emulates Dangerous Music's Bax EQ. And this one has even less features than the Poltec. The Bax, while used on tracks and buses here and there, is mainly used for the mix bus or the master track. Its design is dead simple, but the magic of this device is obviously the objectivity it grants you, but also the fact that it can shape the tone and vibe of your track with what I would say is arguably the smoothest way possible. Check out this mix with the Bax on the master. Okay, so this is the Bax EQ. And as you can see, it's very, very basic. We have a low shelf and a high shelf each with specific stepped bands, right? We can only choose these specific bands, a boost or a cut, and then a low cut and a high cut. That's all that this is, all right? It also has this little pre-switch that just gives it a little bit of mojo. I don't really know what this is doing, and that's kind of the point of this, of this video. Who cares? If it sounds better, use it. So I'm gonna turn this on. Let's go ahead and listen to the difference that this little switch makes. The best way that I can describe what it sounds like this little pre-switch is doing is you can hear it tighten up the low end and you can hear that just maybe there's a little bit of saturation happening to the smallest amount. Anyway, let's get into what the real meat of this EQ can do and that's the relationship between the shelving filter and the cut. Let's go ahead and say we want to clean up some of the bass here. So there's definitely a lot of wumpy low end in this mix and so what I could do is maybe I could choose a frequency band that I want to cut. So maybe we'll choose one of these uh, kind of higher bass frequencies here. Let's take a listen. I'm really digging this 230 setting right here. And we can also clean up some of the super deep low end. So by using this cut. Now this cut is a big, big, long roll off. This is not a harsh cut, okay? We're, we're talking a long range of frequencies are getting affected here. So even if I set it on 12 hertz, which is very deep, we're still gonna be cutting frequencies all the way up into who knows, maybe even, you know, 100 hertz. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and just take a listen because that's what this video is about. So I'm liking this cutting at 30 hertz right here. So that sounds pretty good on the low end. Now let's take a look at the top end. Maybe we're working toward a lo-fi kind of sound, okay? We're, we're, we're working toward a vintage vibe here. So maybe the other move is to drastically cut the top end with this smooth cut. Let's go ahead and see what this sounds like when I, when I do a pretty drastic cut. So I'm liking the cut that's centered around this 11K right here. But of course, we've lost a lot of the top signal and maybe we want to bring some of it back in. So let's use this shelving filter. Cool, so I'm really, really liking this sound right here. Let's go ahead and A-B this. So what we're listening for is the Bax is focusing the signal. It is taking kind of a bunch of disparate, crazy low end and a bunch of crazy top end and it's just focusing it to this beautiful mid range. So to me, that's a really enjoyable kind of lo-fi sound. Let's work on maybe a more hi-fi sound. So I'll go ahead and just zero everything back out here. And this time, what I want to focus on is let's do a little bit of bass enhancement. And the Bax is amazing at bass enhancement. Let's go ahead and dial in a bass boost. So to me, this 84 really, really sends it. Now, of course, this is a lot of bass. So we have to work on the cut to try to bring this back into a usable range.
Awesome. So having this cut cranked all the way up is really, really kind of having an interesting interplay between this bass boost and this cut. So now that we have such a weighted mix that it's got a lot of low end in it, let's look at the top end. Really enjoying that 4.8 right there. And now let's just roll off a tiny bit of those super highs. Awesome, so let's A-B this now. So this is before. Listen to how sterile and lifeless this mix is before the backs. And real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you feel like my teaching style vibes with you, I just want you to know that I offer what I believe to be the most robust and thorough Ableton online courses available on the internet. These courses are chock full of video lessons just like this to raise your skills with Ableton to the next level quickly and efficiently. We also have a burgeoning private Discord server bustling with an amazing community of musicians who are supportive of each other's careers from seasoned pros all the way down to beginners. So if you want to learn more about my courses, there's a link up here in the description and in the comments. Anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, so the third and final plugin that I want you to take a look at is the Slick EQ by Tokyo Dawn Labs. Now, there is an amazing Dan Worrall video already on this EQ, but I just want to flex some of the really interesting and awesome things that this EQ can actually do. What is the difference between this EQ and the other ones? Well, first of all, you have variable bands. As you can see, I can take these bands and move them around, right? The other thing I want to say is that this EQ gives you a lot of control over the saturation qualities of the EQ. You could actually turn those saturation qualities completely off, okay? But we're gonna leave the EQ saturation on and there are a bunch of different flavors. I really enjoy using the British flavor for some reason. It just makes the sound that I like to use. So what I'll do is I'll just load up a fresh version of this and we're gonna be working on this bass right here. I'm gonna switch, switch this over to British mode. Let's just take a listen to the bass already. This is that Polybrute track I was showing you before. Now that is a beautiful bass tone from the Polybrute, but it's kind of wiling out, right? I would love to add a little bit of grit to this sound and I'd love to control the low end a little bit more. So maybe we'll first work on the grit part. So I'm gonna turn on the saturation and now as I boost gain into this EQ, we're actually gonna be saturating that stage. And you might have heard that when I turn this gain up, it sounds like the track is actually getting quieter. That's because there's an auto gain feature. Basically what this does is it tries to make the RMS level of the signal before the plugin and after the plugin the same. I don't really like using this. I trust myself to use the output gain to match the volume as best as I can. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm really liking that around 1500 hertz range right there for the boost. And you can hear there's a little bit of saturation. Let's go ahead and A-B this saturation. We can hear just a little bit of harmonics being added there and that sounds really nice. Okay, so as I was saying, the low end is a bit flabby. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with this high pass filter and it's off turned all the way down, but as you turn it up, this is yet again, just like the back CQ, a really broad sweeping uh, high pass. So what I've just done is it sounds like now the frequencies are kind of, to my ears, it sounds like everything is pretty flat now. All the bass notes are about the same volume, but now I've lost a lot of that really fun oomph that's in that signal, so I can add it back with the low gain. Now at this point, this is a shelving filter. I could use it as a bell curve, but let's just use a shelving filter and see what happens. Now let's go ahead and listen to the difference between using the saturation and not saturation. Now let's go ahead and AB the plugin. Listen to how much more those subs are cleaned up. Awesome. 
So this is a really great plugin. I really recommend that you watch Dan's video on this, but yet again, this device is free. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's so cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to, now that I've made changes with either a Pultec or this EQ on all these tracks, let's go ahead and listen to the whole thing. I don't want you to get the impression that I'm advocating for these non-spectrum graph EQs to replace the amazing modern EQs and surgical radness that using a spectrum analyzer presents. Instead, I'm presenting these EQs as more of an addition to your tool belt. Much if not most of the time, my signal chains will consist of both a non-spectrum EQ and a spectrum EQ. For example, a Poltec taking care of the tonal shaping and a Pro Q3 taking care of the notching in and out of conflicting frequencies and stuff like that. I've gotten so used to relying on the Pultec for my tonal shaping that going back to just a Spectrum EQ seems counterintuitive and would really suck a lot of the joy out of my mixing process. Also, when listening back to my mixes prior to using the Pultec, I gotta say they seem to lack something that I can't quite put my finger on. Maybe it's being a bit more daring with my mix and focusing my decisions on the mid-range. Anyway, I hope this video was useful to you. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.